Hey everyone, I hope y'all are doing well, and I just want to wish y'all a happy holiday and a very Merry Christmas. Before we get started in today's video, I need to give a quick shout out to a YouTube channel that goes by Rachel Pence. Uh, she was one of the people that helped me get my channel started. She helped me figure some stuff out and, you know, the proper way to edit and what software to use and so on. So I just wanted to give her channel some attention. Um, her channel consists of, you know, everyday life videos. It's got vlogs, it's got political stuff, it's got science stuff, it's got animals. It's just a jack of all trades channel. So I'll have a link to her comment in the description below. If y'all would, please go check her out. All right, and before we get started, please everybody hit that subscribe button and please give my video a like. All right guys, let's get into the topic of today's video. For today's video, we're gonna be talking about the lifeboats that the Titanic had on board. And as we all know, the Titanic didn't have enough lifeboats for everyone on board. And throughout the years since the tragedy, this has gotten a lot of flack from people in the modern world. You know, oh, that was extremely reckless. Oh, uh, the Titanic, people thought the Titanic was unsinkable. That's why it didn't have enough lifeboats and so on and so forth. But you see, the truth to the whole reason why the Titanic didn't have enough lifeboats, it's a little bit more complicated than that. And honestly, even if the Titanic did have enough lifeboats for everyone, would that have saved more lives? Well, it's very complicated. And that's the topic we're gonna to be talking about in today's video. The RMS Titanic, which was completed in 1912, had a total of 16 regular lifeboats and four collapsible lifeboats on board. Now at the time, this was considered plenty of lifeboats to have. You see, the Board of Trade, which certified ships and everything, awarded ships with that had more watertight compartments. The more watertight compartments you had, the fewer lifeboats you had to carry on board. This was one reason why the Titanic didn't have enough lifeboats. So the whole mentality around that time, you know, where the Board of Trade was like, okay, the more watertight compartments you have on your ship, the fewer lifeboats you need. It was an incentive for shipbuilders to make their ships safer. Let's make our ships as safe as possible so we don't have to put on as many lifeboats. Why load a deck with a bunch of lifeboats all over the place when we can make it so our ships just don't sink? So that was, that was kind of the logic at the time. And another thing was that before the Titanic disaster, you have to think, the Titanic had 2,200 people on board. Never before had such a huge ship had the entire amount of people on board evacuated in an evening like this, you know? So at the time, lifeboats weren't considered a means to, to completely evacuate a ship. They were more considered a means of getting people off of the ship and moving them from one ship to another ship. Because in the area the Titanic was sailing, there were tons of ships out there. That was the big route that ships took at the time. So the, with the new uh, Marconi wireless technology the Titanic had, they always assumed that there would be another ship close by to come and help people if a disaster occurred. The next thing we need to talk about is this whole idea that people have in the modern era that lifeboats are always the safest way to go. Well, that isn't always the case, such as the story with this ship, the RMS Atlantic. This ship was the White Star Line's first major disaster before the Titanic or any other ships that would follow. In 1873, the RMS Atlantic was bound for Halifax, and it ended up getting lost in rough seas and weather, and it ended up crashing onto a giant rock right off the coastline of Halifax and began to sink. Now, the ocean was so rough that night that it ended up pushing the ship completely against the shoreline, and the waves were so high and the conditions so treacherous that the lifeboats on the Atlantic, when they attempted to lower them away, ended up killing a lot of the passengers that were in those lifeboats. The story of the Atlantic is a great example of a time when lifeboats were not the best option. I mean, the Atlantic hit a rock right off of the coast of the mainland. I mean, they were, you know, swimming distance to the mainland. But when they lowered those lifeboats over the side, the waves ended up picking up the lifeboat as soon as it hit the water, and it threw the Atlantic's lifeboat into the hull of the Atlantic, killing everyone on board. So the Titanic gave us this false impression of if you get into a lifeboat, you are safe, you are fine. But that's not the case. There are so many ca uh, accounts throughout history where a lifeboat isn't the best thing to do at, at all times. So try to put yourself in the position of the passengers on the lifeboat. You've got this big ship that is sinking very slowly. It's brightly lit, it's warm, it looks safe. Why would you want to get into a lifeboat in the beginning and risk leaving this big, beautiful, safe ship to get into a rickety little rowboat in the middle of the Atlantic. 
This was a factor in getting the Titanic evacuated. You see, from the moment the Titanic struck the iceberg to the moment the crew actually began to get the lifeboats prepped and get them ready to be lowered away, it was over an hour before the first lifeboat actually successfully touched the water. And the passengers didn't know that the Titanic was sinking, there was no alarm system, and the crew weren't telling them, you know, hey, this ship is sinking. So the crew, it took this crew a huge amount of time just to get passengers willing to leave the Titanic. And don't even factor the women who refuse to leave their husbands behind. Now the Titanic's crew get a lot of flack nowadays because they weren't really trained in operation of these lifeboats due to the fact that, you know, they didn't have a proper lifeboat drill while the Titanic was at sea. So James Cameron was curious as to how long it would take to prep a lifeboat and how long it would take the crew to successfully launch a lifeboat. So he did this experiment with one of the lifeboats left over in the movie where he timed how long it would take this crew who was trained and knew what they were doing to prep and successfully launch this lifeboat. What ended up happening in that clip you saw is it took the crew to get the lifeboat up off of their simulated deck and get it ready to load passengers into it. It took them about five, five and a half minutes just to get the boat ready to go. And now that's under ideal conditions. The conditions the night the Titanic sank were not ideal. When they were getting those lifeboats ready to go in the beginning of the sinking, the Titanic had a large amount of steam still inside of the ship and they had to vent off all that steam. So the funnels in the Titanic were venting all the steam and it was so loud that the officers said that in order to talk to somebody right beside them, they had to cup their hands over their mouths like this and yell at the top of their lungs just to get the person beside them to hear them. So they're trying to get all of these lifeboats ready to go and prep up all of this while they can barely talk to each other. What they ended up figuring out was that each lifeboat in total between prep time, loading, and everything once they got them going, each lifeboat took about 30 minutes to lower. Now that doesn't mean that they were just working on one lifeboat at a time, they were working on many, many lifeboats over the course of the sinking. But based on that and how many lifeboats they had on board, it took about two hours to successfully lower all the lifeboats on the ship. So that means even with all of Titanic's crew working as hard as they can to lower these lifeboats, that they just barely got 18 of the 20 lifeboats launched. Remember, the two collapsible boats that are by the Titanic's first funnel were not launched. They were floated off. So right here towards the end, and you see this lifeboat that's still connected to the Titanic, even though it's about to sink, they were still fighting to lower these lifeboats away while the ship was literally dropping out from underneath them. Should the Titanic's crew have been more prepared? Absolutely. Should they have had a drill at sea? Yes. Should they have known what was going on? Yes. And... There are a lot of other factors as well that I don't have time to talk about in this video that also contribute to the sinking. But now remember, that half hour figure that I gave you with each lifeboat, that assumes that every single lifeboat was launched without incident. That wasn't the case. Here's an example of one such incident. When they were lowering this lifeboat, one end of the lifeboat was lowering faster than the other, and it almost spilled all the passengers out and into the ocean. So they actually had to stop lowering one end and lower the other in order to catch up and successfully lower the lifeboat into the water. Another incident occurred with this lifeboat you see coming down alongside the Titanic right now. It's being lowered away into a water discharge where the engineers inside the Titanic are pumping the water out. That is seawater that had flooded the inside of the Titanic and this lifeboat is being lowered away into it. So this water that is being pumped out of the Titanic began flooding this lifeboat and almost sank her. In my opinion, one of the worst incidents that happened happened right here. One of the lifeboats got pushed too far back and got pushed underneath another lifeboat while the officers up above didn't know that the lifeboat was being lowered and it nearly crushed that lifeboat. So in my opinion, based on everything you all just saw, how trained the officers were and the whole situation they were in, I mean, just remember, they weren't prepared for any of this. And based on their situation and all the training they had and how they handled it, they did extremely well in my opinion. They did what most people would consider to be near impossible. They successfully launched 18 of the 20 lifeboats on board with incidents and with, with the crowd going nuts as time went on. And I mean, because of those officers, 700 people survived that night. I think those officers should be praised for doing as well as they did given the circumstances that they found themselves in. 
As you can see in this sinking animation by Titanic Honor and Glory, you are looking at lifeboat collapsible A, and on the other side you'll see collapsible B. These two lifeboats weren't even being prepped until the ship had less than 10 minutes to live. You can see the water is coming up on the boat deck now. So the officers just barely had enough time to launch the lifeboats that they had on board. These last two boats were floated off and one of them even ended up upside down. They weren't properly launched. In conclusion, do I think more lifeboats on the Titanic would have saved more lives? Not really. It's possible you might have been able to save maybe 50 more people or something, but I think more lifeboats would have just gotten in the way of the officers. Just think about how much time it took them to launch the lifeboats that they had on board. If they would have had more lifeboats, like for example, the Titanic was designed to hold 64 lifeboats, but even with just the 20 they had, it still took them two hours to launch. If they would have had all 64, the lifeboats would have been literally all over the boat deck, clustered everywhere. It was like that with the Olympic when they put enough lifeboats on it after the Titanic disaster. So they would have had to move all of those lifeboats out of the way before that they could even begin lowering the lifeboats. It's possible that if more lifeboats were on board, they wouldn't have even been able to launch 20 lifeboats. And any more lifeboats that were left on the Titanic after the sinking, or during the sinking's final moments, I mean, they would have been dragged under with the ship or broken up when the Titanic went down. Because remember, all of the lifeboats were connected to the ship with ropes and stuff like that. And the ropes need slack, like they need to be relaxed in order for you to break them free. But with the Titanic going down and all the lifeboats being pulled downward with the ship, there's no way you could have freed those lifeboats, especially with the ship's downward slant. So, in my opinion, I believe the Titanic, the reason the number of people survived the Titanic that did was because the Titanic had the number of lifeboats that it did have on board. Alright guys, well that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something from it and found it insightful, interesting, and you enjoyed it. Please leave uh, any comments, any questions, or anything like that. I'll try to answer them, and please leave me some video suggestions. I will read everything. Anyway guys, please hit that subscribe button. Please give my video a like and thank you all very much. I wish you all a Merry Christmas and you all be safe out there. Have a good one.